Consider first how abstract classes can help. No doubt you've seen models like what's shown on the screen. Geometry stereotypes are repeated for every feature class, and numerous properties associated with that geometry get needlessly redefined. Well, what happens when you decide later that a different geometry would be better instead? That's right, you have to go back and change that geometry stereotype everywhere. And that's no fun when you're creating a large-scale geodatabase design. But notice the equivalent model on the right. In this model, we've refactored the geometry information into an abstract class. So the geometry gets automatically inherited by all of its descendant classes. Now if I want to change from a point to a polygon, I make the change in one place. Yes, the abstract shape class becomes my single point of control. Is this switching of geometries at design time really practical, or just theory? Well, it really is useful. I've seen examples where a master model would be used to generate different kinds of schema, depending on the application. So the need was to switch elements at the top level of the model hierarchy, say from a feature class to a table or object class, and have that change cascade to all descendant elements. That allowed, for example, the modeler to instantly switch from generating a feature-based schema to an event-based schema instead. So how do you use abstract classes when modeling ArcGIS schemas in Enterprise Architect? Let's see an example. Here are the feature classes in the Smart Meter model that I created in the last webinar. Notice the geometry for house and office is repeated. I really want all my building types to have the same geometry, so it might as well live in the abstract class. For an existing model like this, I can refactor the stereotype just by deleting it from each concrete class, house and office, using the element properties. Go to the stereotype field and uncheck ArcGIS point. Then you'd add the stereotype to the abstract class. Again via properties from the ArcGIS profile add point. That would still leave you with some duplication, though, of the system fields, like Object ID, shown here in the Project Browser. You could refactor those, too, if you like. But let me show you how to create this model from scratch, this time including the geometry information in the abstract class. I've started a new workspace and opened the diagram in the Feature Dataset package, which is all created for me by EA's ArcGIS model pattern. First, I'll add the abstract class, Building, then my concrete classes, House and Office, though it doesn't matter which you create first. In UML terms, the abstract property is set to True on my Building class here, so you see the name rendered in italics. When you use the ArcGIS toolbox, the abstract property is set automatically for you. Now for the concrete classes, and these are just plain UML classes. Use a generalization connector from the concrete classes to the abstract class, and this causes them to inherit any abstract fields and geometry stereotype from the target class. Now this is the really important part. Add the desired stereotype to the abstract class. Say we want to represent every type of building as a point in the geodatabase. It's easy. Just set it in the abstract class and all our concrete classes will be implemented as points. Now add your fields subtypes, and so on. Now notice how this model differs from our earlier approach. First, the abstract class contains all the tag values associated with the point stereotype. And these are inherited by the concrete classes. Also, with this approach, we don't have all the system level fields like object ID, which you can add if you need to customize the exported schema in that regard. 
So overall we have a much simpler model where the shape and its associated properties are defined in the parent class. This eliminates a lot of duplication in the model which is already evident with only two concrete classes. So you can appreciate how useful this approach is when designing much larger geodatabases. Furthermore, this approach gives you a single point of control for adding, removing, or changing the geometry in an entire branch of your model. For example, if I now want all buildings to be polygons instead of points, it's so easy. Just change the base class stereotype, like so. And just a note in case you need to set the has M and has Z values. In the current release of EA, you need to add a valid shape field to the class as well. You can just grab that from any feature class you created using the toolbox. To demonstrate, I'll take a copy of the shape field from a stereotyped feature class I created previously from the toolbox. Drag and drop from the project browser to a diagram element that creates a copy of the field, which I'll now delete since it's not needed for this example. And what if you need to override some of the shape properties like has M and has Z in the lower level classes? Well, one easy way is to just override the inherited tags. You can see them now promoted as locally overridden tagged values. Again, for now at least, be sure to add a valid shape field whenever you set these values. Now let's look at the resultant schema after it's been imported to our catalogue. As with the original approach, we have the house and office feature classes. Both are points and they inherit the abstract classes field, namely street address.